What's up everybody and welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 11, The Burden of Proof. Uh, first off, I don't know how many more of these lectures I'm going to be making. Um, I've covered mo mo most of the big things I wanted to cover, again, right now. People say there's not a logical basis to mathematics, good old Kurt and Gödel. Um, but it is what it is, that's clearly it, um, so it's kind of a, you know, a big problem in uh, research. But no one cares, right guys? Uh, but I've titled this one The Burden of Proof, well, this will probably, like I said, th there might be a couple more to this series, but past that I'll probably do um, just shorter topics, more direct specific questions that I want to respond to. Um, just in different research subjects and not really keeping a series anymore. Um, but we have, some, we have some good content for today's episode. Uh, I titled it The Burden of Proof because we'll be mainly talking about just like the actual mechanical, well, maybe 50-50 with like history and the mechanics of court, like what happens when you um, file a complaint. Because uh, today, today is Tuesday the 21st of 2020, acting, the acting House Speaker, Larry Householder, and four others have just been arrested um, by, I don't know if it was local authorities, but in conjunction with the FBI under the RICO statute. And back in August of last year, and uh, the, the, base, the legal basis for my lawsuit is under the RICO statute. Um, so we're going to we're going to cover this briefly, and this is we'll talk about like the mechanics of court. Um, but I, I briefly skimmed the affidavit. Uh, an affidavit is just a sworn statement or a sworn complaint, and then once you have an affidavit, it goes to a grand jury, which is just a bunch of citizens, and they decide if there's enough uh, evidence present to uh, go to a trial. Um, but the the, the press briefing that I watched for maybe 20 minutes, it seems like the, the, the state prosecutors don't comment on the strength of the case, um, but it, it seems like it's, there, there's just, it seems like it's a, a home run for the prosecution, um, but that, that will develop publicly. <laughs> um, but they, they basically, they bribed, took a bribe, accepted bribes of about $61 million in, in return for enacting a bailout uh, legislation, I believe. Um, but, wow! We're going to estimate how much financial damage has done to the taxpayers of Ohio because the state has not disclosed um, scientific information. Um, and if I sound nasally or if my eyes are super red, uh, yes, I smoke a lot of pot, but I have an ear infection because, again, um, I don't even have human rights yet. Here's human rights, here's constitutional rights, here's, like, civil rights. I'm still down there why right? I can't take care of my own basic health. Um, so we're going to compare this lovely case of fraud versus the fraud that's, again, not even being publicly acknowledged yet because it's so fucking severe. Um, and then we're going to... We're going to talk about the history and relationship of law, religion, and biology. Um, got some good points to go over there. Um, and then I'm going to teach you how to be a zoo animal. In one of the other lectures, we talked about suffering a little bit. R.I.P. my homie Harambe. Um, but, like, I'm not kidding. I don't have human rights. I can't call police officers. I, 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 when I try to report a crime, they literally don't let me. Like it, I mentioned in the last lecture, the, 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 the police operator laughing, literally laughing to me saying I've been defrauded out of tens of millions of dollars. That's a profound understatement of what's occurred. Um, but again, people have no attention span because of technology. Psychology matters more than biology. And then the minute you offend somebody, they're absolutely sure that heat of that offense, they're absolutely sure they're right. Um, so I'm going to give you some more tips and tricks on how to be a fucking zoo animal. Um, and is that, is that Mike DeWine? Well, hey, bro, I'm just going to, guys just coming by today to give you another update on the coronavirus. 
And our state, our state's doing so good. Oh, thanks, Mike DeWine. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Let's get started. So where I want to start is just honestly, I think, some very poignant truths about religion, biology, law, and history. Um, uh, Jesus and God were distinctly different people. God was likely the first judge. And I have an asterisk up there. Um, because the simple reality of life is there's so many human beings that have come before us. And there's just so, like, think of all the events right now going on that you'll never hear about, you'll never know about, um, and how, how prevalent news and Twitter and Instagram and those uh, social media platforms are. And then if you wanted to, like, say who exactly uh, did what past written record, I mean, it's truly kind of impossible. So I put first with an asterisk because that should read, God was likely the most prominent judge um, and, and at a time substantially before written record um, with plenty of other influential characters and people that we just there's we just have no way of, of knowing anything about them um, but I think this is I think this is this is evident right you go into court you swear on the Bible and you say so help me God first of all what is the Bible well it's the Jewish Torah, the Pentateuch, I believe. Um, uh, that doesn't really need to be a box. But and then and then it's letters. Like it's not an actual book as we read a book today. It's a collection of I, I call it just a collection of letters. Um, but the other the other the other very poignant thing is okay. So if God and Jesus uh, were just again. Okay, so religion, the individual is never the person who starts the religion. Well, I don't say never, but typically not. Um, so, like, for example, just in the Catholic faith, the, the Catholic Church teaches, you know, no premarital sex. Um, on historical record, um, in one of Thomas Cahill's book, the, the book discussing Jesus' life, on historical record, he was very forgiving or just treats casual sex like we treat casual sex. And so the individual, right, the only real quote that I like about genius that I've read before is it's just somebody we don't want to compare ourselves to. And then you have somebody who's really, really well behaved, someone who's really moral, someone who's really hard, simply hard working, and then people package up their shitty little jokes, and then when there's no technology and it's literally all word of mouth, then you get these kind of like this floaty concept of God, or just these really flamboyant things that were, that were never true, that never have been true, and people never thought of them. Um, I always say it, but I like, firmly believe there are just zero religious people on this planet. They're just people who are respectful of their traditions and of people who really did help, are profoundly helped our species, which is a very good thing to do. Um, but the other thing is if. God was an ancient genius, right? And we had a base two number system, and then experience wasn't unique, and everyone can learn, well then you would have some sort of doctrine that says, wherever two or more are gathered, you're in the presence of God. Right? When you speak a stupid argument out loud, simply the presence of other human beings, body language still speaks louder than verbs, than words, than sounds. And you can viscerally perceive them. Hmm. Why? Why? We're all, we all want to have a peaceful protest, and Johnny wants to go bash someone's knees in. Everyone's going to be like, fuck you, Johnny. But if everyone doesn't say that, well, then that's where you get the mob mentality. But that's true, man. That is so, so effing true. <laughs> uh, and then I just wanted to, uh, this is not super on topic with the religion, biology, and law. Because, like I said, this is just. These are just these are just facts people have to accept. Um, but I, I wanted another historical reference, not really pertaining to law, so to speak, but just for warfare. I had fairness and equality in law and warfare. And uh, I'll comment more about on the when I talk about the mechanics of of court. Um, 
but but I, I personally conjecture that I think like God was the person, like an eye for an eye. I think he actually like propagated that as like a law, and then someone else comes along and says an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But I want I just want an honest question of what really establishes fairness in law, right? If someone rapes somebody and kills their daughter, is it really civil or is it really right to not like let the family have an option to have like a five minutes alone in a room with them or something? Um, I really don't know. I, I don't have any personal opinions, but I think it's a question people really have to ask. Um, and the reference I wanted to do for warfare was simply I don't have the book. I'm probably going to butcher the reference. But one of the initial interactions from either the Incas or the Mayans or another large scale, I think it was Incans or Mayans, but a, a Native Americans uh, society with one of the first European uh, interactions with either a Portuguese or a Spanish person, well, well, well defined on historical record. It was like, I want to say like sub a hundred, less than a hundred Spanish or Portuguese people had like an ambush attack against tens of thousands, if not tens of thousands of Native Americans. But the Native Americans were literally like so confused about their fighting style because it was so like not fair. It was like a, it was like guerrilla warfare or ambush type style attacks. And so like a hundred uh, Europeans could slaughter like thousands or tens of thousands because they were so like they still had rule of, like, rules of war, so to speak. And, and to me that's just really, really interesting to... because I haven't studied the Native American societies too in-depth. Um, I don't know how much information is out there. But I would honestly, like, if you could somehow gauge, like, the brutality or civility of warfare from even, like, thou like th 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 a thousand and ten thousand years ago, you might be looking at societies that are literally truly more civil in some respects. Um, so I just thought that was a very interesting historical re uh, reference. But now let's talk about um, oh the, what, the other thing I wanted to say about biology and laws about can like cannabis needs to be hi historically anytime someone's uh, burning incense, they're typically hotboxing. Um, there are different non-psychoactive plants, but at no point was there a reason to say, like I said, drugs are bad. And it's evident historically uh, within respects to religion, biology, and historical record. Moving on. So now discussing the uh, Larry Householder, and the, the Speaker of the, the House of, of the State of Ohio, um, just a couple of definitions. Again, an affidavit is a sworn statement, such as an FBI agent he filed a, a criminal complaint in the Southern, uh, Southern District in Ohio. Um, a subpoena is a court order. Uh, I googled it and it says to attend court, but a subpoena is just a court order. Um, and then so the, the process, someone, if someone accuses you of a crime or of anybody of a crime, uh, you get arrested. Then you have a grand jury. Some cases or some times there's not, you don't have a grand jury. And they decide if there's enough evidence to convict. Um, then you enter a plea. Then you go to trial. And then you're sentenced. Um, but the thing I wanted to point out, uh, I just wanted to cover that briefly. But $61 million defrauded from taxpayers. Uh, to, to, to enact a bailout. $24 billion in annual revenue every single year for the Department of Ohio uh, Education. That's the state of Ohio, man. And again, this isn't a fundamental proof. Well, it's, it is a fundamental proof. But I, I literally don't know how many theorems I've sent to, to the math people. And so when you're taking, right, right now in the state of Ohio, they're talking about sending kids back uh, with the COVID going on. And, I, and again, I, I should be involved in these decisions, like for real as fuck. I, should, I need to see the actual data. I need to be more involved. But I, I personally think you probably you guys are gonna fuck up sending them back to school. Um, but to, for, to the, for the legal consequences, I mean, you're talking a fundamental math proof where it affects, again, every contract in existence, 
Every, every person going to school in existence. Every bit of healthcare in existence. All of it. The entire fucking shit, man. And so, $61 million for a racketeering charge, and a, ra and a racket's, again, where, wherever two or more are gathered, you're in the presence of God. Wherever two or more are gathered, you're in the presence of conspiracy. And that, that's our definition today. Um, but my case is just so much more profound, and it's, it has a lot to do with me, but it affects fucking everybody, man. Everybody. Like, like the, the House Speaker affects everyone, too, but this is a profoundly bigger scale. But this is Ohio, man. I think I think I think I heard it's like the most corrupt case in ten years, like the biggest fraud case or racket racketeering case in ten years. Um, I think in the entire country. <laughs> Go fucking Buckeyes, man. O H. Uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to say there. I just wanted to cover some of the basics of court. Now I'm going to teach him how to be a zoo animal, and our boy Mike DeWine is about to give us an update on the COVID. Another reference I forgot, the oh, only God can judge me, right? Yeah, that's because maybe there was a really smart guy that could reduce logical arguments in real time directly to the person. That's what happened. Um, but you could also see this if you just go on Tinder, man. Go on Tinder and swipe until you see a bio a biology. Bi biography, excuse me, that says something like, I used to be an atheist until I realized I was God. Anything to that effect is the society understanding all of these things at an intuitive and instinctual level. Um, but now we're going to talk about how to be a zoo animal. What is the most disrespectful thing someone can do to you? Kill you, right? Murder. Um, and then past that, so what up here, I have the spectrum of respect. And then I just have understand friendship is for, let's put quotation marks, right? Love thy neighbor, be a friend. That's what these people are talking about. You know why you, you sneeze and say, God bless you, or ah, Jesus Christ? It's because they talked about friendship. But the interesting thing is, is, is for that to happen, everyone around them has to not give a fuck about friendship. So what, do you, what does friendship feel like to you? Convenience? Or are people genuinely understanding and engaging you? And the other, frankly, the younger generations, I, I, I'm 26, uh, but like the, the, the 20 year olds and younger that I've just interacted with at the gym or just here talking just at the pool or whatever, they sound actually nicer. <laughs> so again, because they're not part of, they might, not, they might have been on the tail end of the universal identity crisis. Um, so, here's our spectrum of respect. Murder is the most disrespectful you can be. Primitive behavior, right? If you go up, you can't verbally speak to a dog, but if you kick it, it knows you're being violent towards it. <laughs> then you have theft and robbery, crimes that aren't uh, damaging to the person, physical being, but uh, damaging their hard work or damaging their time investment. Um, and then you have individual awareness. And then you have the ever-elusive basic normal behavior. And again, here's America. Here's, here's your Karens not fucking wearing a mask. Yes, you should absolutely fucking wear a mask. It's, it's like, guys, guys. Mouth, thing in front of mouth, less stuff through this thing. Doesn't matter what the thing's in front of your mouth. <laughs> But no. Oh, do you have a legal? Do you have a legal right? You don't have a le right. You have free speech. You don't have a right to incite violence. There are right answers in mathematics. The burden of proof, right? Conjecture, bio and bio bio biologically, mathematically, physically, any lees is way before the actual proof, right? Look at the frontal lobotomy. That won the Nobel Prize in medicine in the 50s or 60s, and you literally just cut poles in people's fucking heads. Psychology is so much more influential than, than, than genuine fact when the cult mob mentality takes over. But 100% wear the, the masks. That shit's stupid as fuck. 
oh, like, well, when you see people on the internet saying it's their constitutional right to not wear a mask. No, it absolutely fucking isn't. Absolutely not. Arrest them. Well, not, no, I'm not, I'm not part of the mask police either, but, again, if you, if you have any resistance to wearing a mask, you're the most stupidest fucking piece of shit fucking ever. Go play in traffic, or go scratch the itch on the top of your mouth with that shotgun. Uh, and don't forget to pull the trigger. But, basic normal behavior. And then here's friendship, right? Here's friendship. We've covered the biological reasons of why people just go for convenient interactions. But in the long run, it's just people don't form meaningful connections and it makes life shitty. Um, and then here's a functioning society. Um, so that's the spectrum of respect. Again, here's fucking America. It's terribly, America's upside down or something. <laughs> uh, but the thing I wanted to say about being a zoo animal is when I presented a definitive mathematical proof and the FDA, and I've ordered the FDA to, to legalize cannabis literally as soon as possible, when you're looking at people defrauding money, money's one thing. But when, when I am absolutely fucking certain, I, I can present any information people want, but when no one interacts with me, it's hard to try to guess what you fucking idiots need to hear. Um, but, but you're killing human beings. The FDA, without the legalization of cannabis, immediately and directly, and again, I hate the conversation, we should legalize cannabis as a way for fucking revenue stream. You're st if, if that is your argument, you're completely scientifically illiterate and go fuck yourself. Legalize cannabis because your cells, when they are under stress, they differentiate the ligands that accept the cannabinoids. Do something. Like, try, like, the FDA, try to learn how to fucking do science. Um... But, yeah, you can't... To be a zoo animal, you just have to be like Harambe, man. People might... People... People will come to see you. People will genuinely like to look at you. They might even pay $25 a day to look at you. But once their kid fucking falls into your fucking nest, they're gonna shoot you, mow you down, and fucking kill you. So that's how you be a zoo animal. You just smile and wave. Say exactly what people want to hear and hope to get the fuck out when you can escape. I am not kidding. I have honestly been trying to leave this country. If you no one's actually watching my videos besides the people who already know this shit. Uh, but I've been actively trying to leave this shit all. And now, now you can't even leave America because of the restrictions, which I agree with. But why can't I leave Ohio and why can't I be paid? Or why can't someone tell me when you guys are going to pay me? I don't know. Um, but that's what I wanted to say was the universal, there's a universal declaration of human rights, which is accepted by every major um, constitution constitutional democracy or constitutional republic, and about 60% of that document is directly violated to me. So this isn't a lawsuit simply for the United States either. This is going to be uh, prosecuted in world court. So education is universal. The lack of education is also universal. And now, Brett, I'm ready to give you the update on the COVID. Thanks, Mike DeWy. What do you have to say? Let's hear it. Thank you again, Brad, for letting me come to your apartment. Just give me a quick update on COVID, the fucking Rona. The fucking COVID coronavirus. Uh, but since last time we talked, you see, Amy Atkins no longer the director of the health because uh, she, did, she did great, breathtaking, groundbreaking work. Um, but she's still going to keep her $200,000 salary. Wow. Mike, why did I get paid? Well, fuck you, Brad. Uh, but anyway, she's going to keep her $200,000 salary because she just fucking liked the, liked the fight so much. But you see, we have piles and piles of dead bodies in America, about 140,000 dead Americans. I'm not too sure about Ohio because, you know, I was too busy uh, securing my own PPP loan. I own a baseball team. And I ain't gonna pay. I got millions of dollars, but I'm not gonna fucking pay. If you don't have millions, Mike, you're fucking stupid. But, uh, you see, you know, I just secured my PPP loan, so I got all distracted by all the dead fucking COVID bodies. I even forgot about the opioid bodies. But, uh, we're still fighting! Every day's a battle!
to infinity. And so we, we, we denied the fundamental, most foundational mathematical proof of human history. We've literally been openly lying about it for fucking four straight fucking years. Yeah, that's about it. The COVID's not going to go fucking away. Oh, yeah, we're going to send the kids back to fucking school. Because school's so important. If they don't go there, they're going to be behind in their learning development. They're going to be behind in their 12-year K-12 to program of how to fucking be a zoo animal. And then their revenue. Then parents might actually have to teach their kids. <laughs> Imagine a baby boomer trying to teach their fucking kids. What are they going to teach them? The shit they never learned? <laughs> Got my PPP loan. But wear your mask. Wear your mask. We're in this foot. And yeah, bro, that's about all I have to say. It's about all I said any other fucking day, too. So, Mike, we're just going to go, go, go and fight the COVID. Yep, that's about it, Brad. So, how's good? See you guys on the next episode.